Okay, I'm here for another episode of Talk to Thorin, and my guest for this one is going to be Saint Vicious, long-time veteran jungler in League of Legends, more recently over the last few years, a coach, and obviously most recently a coach with FlyQuest, and this is it, we both keep it real, like, we're not going to start out with all stuff about like, oh, and then CLG and something, and then sort of like sneak in the back door of like, oh, so how did this scenario happen with FlyQuest and you on the stream stuff? Let's just go straight with that. So what 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 do you have to tell me at the beginning of this interview before we sort of dive into the follow-ups and stuff? What, what do you say about this whole incident that obviously is kind of the burning topic that I assume people are going to want to hear discussed when they load this video? Um. Okay, wow. I didn't think you're just going to go straight into it, but... Uh... Yeah, so I kind of oh, just okay. wanted... what about this? Oh, no, 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 I got it, I got it. Yeah, go on, yeah, yeah, go yeah. on. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I just, just kind of wanted to shed light on kind of like the situation and um, just kind of, I, I didn't really, I don't want to say like defend myself, but I didn't really get a chance to actually like speak from my perspective of it, sure. like what my actual intent was, like all that. Well, wait there one second, because I guess I didn't explain like the, what the scenario is. So for the scenario, for people who aren't aware, is Saint was a coach with FlyQuest, in theory, he was going to be the coach for season nine as well. Like I had, um, I was on an episode of Listen Local where we had Nick Fan, who was the general manager of FlyQuest. He mentioned that I'd retained Saint, etc. But then I think it was days or even a week after that, this scenario happened where a clip from your stream came up where you were playing League, and then somehow I don't. This is something you can inform us of. Somehow the topic of depression came up. And you made some comments on the stream where you essentially said like you thought was made up or you thought that and a bunch of other things were, were not real or they were things that, you know, maybe people could just get over in their own mind and maybe change their attitude and get over. And the problem is within all that, in Saint fashion, you made some incendiary comments, you know, and this blew up. Obviously, it's a very touchy subject. Mm -hmm. People were outraged and then... Not very long after you, there was a letter came out that said that you resigned from FlyQuest, and that's why we're here. So okay, just so now people know the story. Now go ahead and okay. tell me what you want to say. Well, I'm basically just gonna kind of speak from my perspective and my own personal experience, and in no way like am I going to tell you guys this story to try to play the victim or to deflect. Like okay. what I said in that circumstance was super fucked up, and um, and it was it was a blanket statement, and it was also like an incomplete thought, like. I wasn't, I was basically wasn't in the right state of mind when I was talking about it. And it was, I wanted to like add on all this other stuff, like talk about my past. Like I've been in the public spotlight in esports scene for nearly a decade. And I've, I've literally never talked about my past or like anything of like I've, I've dealt with, I like had to go through. Okay. And, uh, and like I wanted to, during that time to like put that into that topic, but I was like in a frustrated state of mind. And I, so I like, kind of caught myself midway and didn't really want to talk about it, but I want to talk about it today. Um, just kind of like, uh, so for, first to start off is like, I definitely do think depression is a real thing. And, you know, there's people that have, you know, severe chemical imbalances and things like that, where they really have like no control over their like emotional state or anything like that. And, uh, you know, I definitely think it's like something that people uh, deal with every, every day. And, you know, along with like uh, numerous like other mental illnesses and, and, and like including ADHD, like, uh, and all the, all those types of things. Like I've hit pretty much history of that in my family as well. Like a bunch of like those types of things, but I'm not going to like time out my family. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to kind of talk about like when I was in basically like when my, my, uh, story with like depression and all that is like when I was in high school, um, you know, I was like probably like 17 at the time. Uh, you know, like obviously I'm going through a lot of like mental stress and shit, uh, just like any other like high school student is. Um, and you know, I had like a lot of things going on with me and I went, walked out to go to school one day and kind of like with my like triggering thing that like really put me into like my spiral. Like uh, I walked out and my, my sister's boyfriend had hung himself in her neighbor's yard. And oh. it, yeah, it was, it was pretty insane at the time. And he was like a close friend to me. Like I grew up, you know, with three sisters, like my parents are divorced. So like any kind of like male figure at the time, like, you know, obviously like I would bond with just kind of like in that situation. Sure, look up to him. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, yeah, he's like, he's like my brother. So, um, yeah, so that ended up just kind of like snapping me and I, I ended up like going to see like a doctor about it. Like I wasn't like taking care of myself. I like didn't want to go outside. Um, and, he, you know, they diagnosed me with depression, tried to put me on anti-depression medicine. Like I actually like was so fucked up that like I, I had to drop out of high school because I just I couldn't leave the house. Like What kind of age was this, did you say? What, like 15 or something, 16 or something? Like uh, I was seven. I was seven, like 16, right. 17, like somewhere in that range. Um yeah, and then I, you know, my parents ended up like forcing me to get my GED after I dropped out of high school, and uh, I was like working some like grocery store job, and 
I just had this like cycle routine where I would just go work my job and then I'd come home and just kind of get lost in like video games, like, you know, World of Warcraft or Inscape. It's kind of like an escapism mechanism. Um, and I was like genuinely like hated myself and like the way I was living. And I, I had this like mentality that if I kept going along that route, I would, one, I would definitely kill myself. Like I would just, like that would be it for me. So, <clears throat> and then like, uh, I was like reading all this like philosophical books and stuff and I'm like, I, I like, uh, I really love like learning about the mind in more of a like perspective way. And um, like one of the things that it pushes that, you know, you can, you can take control of your life uh, by like doing drastic change and things like that. And I'm not saying like sure. this works for, this doesn't work for everybody, but like, this is just like what worked for me in that circumstance. And like, this is what I tried. And so like, on a, like a random tangent, I like just signed up to join the Navy. I was like, I have to get out of here. I have to like change my situation. And, you know, I started a, a workout routine to, uh, to, you know, kind of like get ready for that. And that started obviously like uh, releasing endorphins into my body, um, you know, messing with the chemistry in my body. And it, it did help a little bit, uh, at least like the buildup. And you know, obviously like, I joined the military, like there's a lot of camaraderie and stuff like that in there and, and brotherhood. And that helped me out a little bit too. But still like, I just kind of like was numbed out for pretty much like five years straight in even when I was in the military. And, um, also like to give a little bit more foresight uh, or explanation like w and during the time when i was in the military there was this policy called don't ask don't tell going on yes. and for people who don't know what that is that basically means that uh for if you were like gay trans anything like that uh granted the military is not like this anymore in america but it was like this during that time but if you're gay or trans like you, you told it to anybody they would just kick you out with dishonorable discharge and okay. if, you, if you have dishonorable discharge like your life is like really fucked like it's basically like a felony kind of um so like you have all these people that uh, they'd have these things going on in their life and they would go to see the doctor, you know, like looking for help uh, and on the base. And, you know, they'd be like, oh, well, you're obviously just suffering from depression. Like you have like the, you know, like all the symptoms of it. And then they would put them on antidepressants. And then a week later, like you'd hear like on the an announcement on the base or like on your ship that that person like took their life. And I don't, for people who don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Like for people who don't know. Um, and the. Uh, and the military has the highest suicide rate out of any job in the U.S., whether it be active duty or veteran. And like, I, I lost a lot of friends to like this type of stuff. So, um, basically, like, I, 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 in my mind, like, I accepted this like mental image where like, if I get labeled with depression, or like, if I like, it's like go a down stigma. like, yeah, it's like a stigma. And if like I go down that route that those people went, then like, I would like fall into like this state, and like, I maybe like would end up like how they did. So. Like that's, I mean, I don't like, it's not that I don't think like depression is real or anything like that. It's like, I am very scared of the stigma of it, if that makes sense. Sure. So, yeah. So then like, I ended up like getting out of the military and I did end up, uh, you know, obviously like pushing past all that. Like I went to college and, uh, sorry, I went to college, yeah, I went to college and, uh, oh. and, uh, like, you know, I, I like, uh, built a pretty good friend group and I like experimented with a lot of stuff, um, that helped me out a lot. And, uh, you know, and obviously got into like pro gaming and things like that. And obviously like it definitely helped my life and like sh shaped me like into the person I am. Like sure. you guys are kind of, you guys have seen kind of seen like my blunders through the years, you know, like all the elements, stuff like that. But I just like want people to know that like everybody, like there's team, like I'm a human being, like just like anybody else. So, um, and like we all, <clears throat> we all make mistakes and, uh, sorry. Sorry, mate. And then, uh, basically. But the main takeaway from all this is like I don't I'm not trying to like be like a victim or anything, but that I want people to understand that you like what my original intent was is that if you feel like you don't have control over your life and like yeah, I said it in the worst way possible where you know it's like man up all that kind of shit, don't be a bitch. Like that's like my exact wording, but like those are the things that I was telling to myself like when I was trying to get through this. And it's like you can you can take control of your life and you can get through things, and it can be it, it can be something as simple as like waking up every day and like and just 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 moving forward so i just want everybody to understand that and um sorry <clears throat> and then uh yeah so i'm gonna do a uh like a coaching sorry i'm gonna do a coaching uh uh like a thing on my discord where anybody can come out like anybody's invited and i'm gonna do it for charity like whether you be an lcs coach amateur coach or like you're just generally interested in uh like learning about like kind of what coaching is about in esports like you're more than welcome to come and uh if you want to donate to that uh it's going to be for charity like you don't have to pay to like come like anybody's welcome to come 
And like, if anybody like feels like they got anything out of it, like they want to like help out, then um, then yeah, they can donate. So what, what chart is it going to be for? Uh, the one that Robin Williams was involved in, uh, I think it was uh, mental. I have to look it up, but uh, I, I had it written down, but it's uh, like, uh, hold on a sec. I'll look it up later, but yeah, I'll, 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 I'll post it on a Twitter. Um, yes. I'll put it in the yeah. description box where you tell me, et cetera. So if people want to know the specific thing, okay. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm, I'll just end up doing that in the future, like probably next week because I have some things going on. Um, but like, hopefully people get something out of that and like, regardless of my situation, like, and all this stuff, like, hopefully that, you know, somebody takes something out of this and like in a positive way. And like, I could have easily have sat here and been like spiteful about this whole situation. Like I have sure. 800, I have like 800 messages in my inbox and like people telling me to kill myself and stuff. And, uh, yeah. So it's like, I just want people to know that like perspective is everything in life. And you know, you, a lot, like there's a lot of like failures that are going to be in your life and, uh, you can use those failures to, uh, to like better yourself as a person and like grow. Okay. Anyway, yeah, but that's that topic. <laughs> okay. There's a, there's a lot in there <laughs> we, we can unpack. There's some things I have a few questions about with that, which is, so, uh, when you said that thing about the military, like I, I'd heard that <laughs> policy, but I only knew it in terms of like, obviously sexuality, because that was the big issue, you know, it was mm -hmm. obviously back then it was particularly about gay people. You know, the idea was like, they weren't supposed to say anything. And so it yeah. created a stigma that they had to sort of live a lie, you know? Um, when you say that part about like, basically like depression is sort of like, you will just be discharged if you don't get better from it rapidly, as you said in that example. You know, well, no, like I, well, no, it wasn't the depression. Like they would get kicked. So like, obviously like if you're, you're gay or trans or something like that. Right, that would make bottle. them feel depressed. Right, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, I just understood that part, okay. Yeah, like they wouldn't kick you out for depression. They would kick you out for basically saying that you're trans or gay. And, and then, oh, so, I see. Okay, so when you went to the person and said you were having problems, they would say, "Oh, because they can't tell you you well, you're obviously yeah. gay and just no." They would say, "Right, you're just depressed, mate. So that's your problem." Exactly. Here's some pills, and then they would. Some of them, unfortunately, would kill themselves afterwards because that wouldn't help their problem. Obviously, if the problem is that they're just gay, that's not no connection. Yeah. Like, exactly. When you say all that, uh, <laughs> does that connect to the part that, as you mentioned, obviously, probably the, I would say, despite the fact that saying depression is not real and these things is in itself quite an, uh, an inflammatory or controversial statement. I actually feel as though one of the bits that probably hit people the hardest was the fact that you said like, you know, not just man up, but you said like, you know, don't be a weak little bitch or whatever. Does part of that come, is that kind of the mentality people had to have in the military? Like you, can't, you have to ignore that you've got a problem? Well, I mean, I accepted that mentality for myself when more for like, even before I joined the military. And I'm not saying like anybody, like they should accept that, but that's, I mean, I was like basically performing mental gymnastics, like going every single day, you know, like sure. trying to pump myself up in any way I can, or like, you know, just like tell myself anything to like keep going. And then, and then yes, that is kind of like the mentality in the military, although they do take, you know, suicide, mental health, all that stuff really serious. There's just a lot of like things that are blocking the full information from getting to like the right people, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah. And that's why, why the don't, like the whole don't ask, don't tell policy, which doesn't exist anymore, by the way, uh, was like such a, like a horrific thing. And, and and then people are like already going through like a whole bunch of other crazy shit in the military at the time. Like, even if you're working in an industrial job or not like a job out in the field, like there, people like die all the time. And like uh, when I was in the military, like my, my sister division on the Frank Cable, like they were working in the boiler room. And this is a place like I would commonly work. The boiler room exploded and like killed, basically boiled every single person alive and like killed them all. And like, this is a place that like I'm like commonly working in and stuff, you know, like you have to deal with some sure. like pretty, yeah, some pretty insane like mental shit on top of that. So it's. So you just got to tell yourself like, ah, oh, that wouldn't have been me, you know, yeah, oh, because oh, obviously it could be you if it's a different week, right? Yeah, yeah, it could definitely be you. So it's like, you're, you're already going through all these like difficult things in your mind. And then like, you may have like some other stuff going on on top of that. And it's just, it's like just a very dangerous territory. And so. Um, that's just how it is. See, this is actually something I was I'm actually surprised to find out because I have to say, my initial reaction when I saw the video is I thought, especially from the way you said those things, because I will say, first of all, it's like a very short clip, you know, like no one knows the context of what was before, what was after. But when I heard that short clip, I actually assumed, and obviously, like I've met you a few times, you know, but I mainly know you from your public persona and your own camera persona. I actually assumed that it was just that you had no experience of this, that, you know, there's certain people in life, you know, have never, they've never had depression or either a family member's never had it or maybe one had it, but they but they thought similarly, like, oh, well, since I haven't had it myself, you know, 
are they just sad? Are they depressed? Or I, it sounded like that, you know, like you just never had any experience with it and you were just purely ignorant of the topic. But instead, it was something that digs into your past, basically, or something that you've never addressed, right? Yeah, like, I mean, that's what I, I'm saying is that, like, and I'm not trying to defend, like, me saying what I said. It's, like, what I, what I said was, like, a moronic Blaken statement within sure. that context. And uh, I definitely shouldn't have said it in that way. But, like, while I was saying, like, I was in a frustrated state of mind from like playing the game or like something somebody said something i can't even remember like how it even got brought up but like i kind of like well, i was just saying these like stupid things and like i wanted to like say all this other shit but it's like in my mind i'm like i'm not in the right mental state to like be talking about this shit right now so i just kind of like dropped i just kind of like hard dropped it in like in in like in like the most idiotic way i possibly sure. can and it just it just ends up coming off as like i'm just like a fucking idiot so it's like, oh, I understand, listen, like, listen, yeah, I understand. I've, got my, I've got a lot of experience with that myself and I have to say like I, 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 I this is something I once said right and people thought I was either joking or use it as an excuse for the dumb things I've said but it's no exaggeration most of the times I've ever done a really stupid tweet or comment that like you know even the way I even if there was like a vague sentiment that was fine about it like the way I phrased it was totally over the top almost every time I've ever done anything legit fucked up that wasn't just banter it's nearly always when like you know I've had a terrible night's sleep or someone's just pissed me off right before I've come on the air and I've thought oh well whatever I'll be fine when I go on camera you know I'll, I'll do the show or whatever and then what happens is even in that moment I'm feeling so frustrated and then because I'm frustrated I can't get my thoughts out properly and then the fact I can't get my thoughts out properly makes me sometimes go the other, go too hard on it you know like I overstate yeah. something or even worse you say it in a very blunt manner you know and because you're frustrated when you're really frustrated you're not really in like a super empathetic frame of mind you know you're kind of thinking about something this is pissing me off you know and so it's it's easy to say fucked up things as, as, as harsh as that might sound right they're, they're not the right thing to say but it can happen and that's just one of the diff. That's like one of the difficulties that uh, a lot of streamers or like anybody who's like just gonna be in a live scenario. Like, I mean, anything can get said. There's no like retakes. There's no. I mean, you can always like retract, kind of like go back on what you said or something sure. like that. But at the end of the day, like what's said is said. Anything can be clipped. Anything can be taken out of context. Like anything can happen. You know, like it's 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 a very like dangerous. Uh, it's just very dangerous. You know, like in in your own like your own emotions can like definitely affect what you're saying. So. Like everybody's like a human being and it's just difficult. Even though I get the feeling a lot of people didn't at all take like the vaguely sentimental angle that I had when I described, I thought, oh, this is just someone like, like this is just someone who doesn't know about the topic. And yeah, he's phrased it a really fucked up way. And if people don't know him, they're going to take it harshly. Like, you know, I know you as a person. I, I, I just assumed, oh, you've never looked into it. Or you're someone who's had a great, like, you know, from the outside, you always seem like a very jolly guy. I would have thought, oh, maybe you're just a guy where things have come easy to you in life. You've never had a real hardship or something, you know. But when you're saying this now, and I'm finding out the context, and I'm somebody who knew you to some degree, did it did it affect you, the backlash, that I'm sure a lot of other people thought the same thing, but in kind of like a, an unsympathetic manner. That, like They thought like, oh, here's a guy who's just had a wonderful life, and he's looking down on people who are depressed, and he... You know, he thinks it's something that they can just get over or something. Did did that did that hit you hard then in like your history? Well, I mean, that's uh, that was the problem. Was like I was in such like a state of shock that like I didn't even know what to say. You know, coming from this experience, like I don't even know what to say at the time or like like how to even and like I talked to like a lot of people and like they're like even they're like dude, even if you try to explain yourself now, like people are there's not that there's not going to be rational they're not going to want to hear it like it'll sound like an excuse to me you know? yeah it'll sound like an excuse and it's like like i don't even like i don't even know how to respond and like i don't even know what to do so it's yeah like i just i i i, I just it was just an insane situation to me and it, it just forest fire and which just got like completely out of control and like blown up and it was just, I don't know, it was just insane. Like I, it's like I said, like I have eight, like 800 messages in my inbox telling me to kill myself. It's like, what do I even say to that? It's, you know, and like, and I'm not trying to like hate on those people or anything like that. Cause obviously like they're, they're probably like in a, in a rough place in their own. And you know, like my heart goes out to them, but it's just like a, it's like a slippery slope and it's like a, it's, it's a, it's a scary world we live in. So. Right. What about this then? So when you said obviously the part about like it doesn't exist or whatever and, and that sort of thing 
Are you someone who's ever actually like, I mean, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and assume based on the things I do know about your history, you haven't done like a degree in medicine, you've never been a doctor, you don't really have, like, even when you said earlier on, you like to look into the mind, you meant from like a philosophy angle, you know, and self-improvement, it wasn't like literally how the mind works biologically or whatever. Are you someone who had ever looked into that? Like, it sounds to me as just an interviewer, you know, as though what you've basically told me about your history with your sister's brother, uh, uh, boyfriend rather, and the Navy and stuff was more like the few times in your life when depression affected you and like sort of barged into your life. Like the, the coping mechanism was the, was the opposite of looking into it. It was like, just push it aside and ignore it. Pretend that's not a problem. It's like, is this a topic uh, you've ever looked into? I, well, no, I, yeah. I, well, I, the way I, I tried to attack it is less from like the medical side. Cause obviously I didn't want to take antidepressants. I didn't want to, like I had, I have been in therapy before, you know, like I didn't really feel like it personally helped me. Um, and it's, you know, like I, not to say that like it, it can't help like other people, but sure. for like my personal experiences, like it didn't help me. So I wanted to go like a different route to like try to help myself. Like, cause these things obviously weren't helping me. Like, I have taken antidepressants and it just, it just numbed me out to the point where it's like, I would rather be sad than like feel numb. Like that's the, was my perspective on it, like how I felt about it. Um, and I decided to go a different route. Like I love like listening to philosophy, like listening to like lectures, like reading on stuff like that. And I think that, you know, the mind is like a really power, like if you could, you can take control of your mind and like perspective is, is the most important thing in life. Like, sure. like, t like, this, like let's say this situation, for instance, like I could sit here in this situation and be, uh, bitter and spiteful and like just kind of recess and you know I could have gone from this in like a completely negative way however like I've learned in my life you know where whenever you have failure um you can you can like the the most growing moments in my life and the things times I've learned the most is when I've like failed the hardest Gosh, and yeah yeah and I think that I mean that's like the truth for like a lot of people so I think that perspective and how you move into things uh, is, is is incredibly important and that's that's kind of the angle I attacked it from um that's what helped it work for me. And like, that's originally what I wanted to get across to people. Obviously, like it definitely didn't go out that way, but sure. yeah. Uh, so it's not like I didn't, I'm not like educated on the situation. It's just, I didn't get to speak, like originally tended to speak from my personal experience and my personal experience alone. Right. And the ignorance of it was that I bl I'm like blanket statementing everybody together. And like, yes. that's like, that's like the most obviously, you know, people, that's obviously a big part of it. Like, it's not even like, here's the thing. If you just said the same thing, but you'd have said, you know, I tried antidepressants. I didn't think they worked for me. And, you know, I actually think there's <laughs> other methods aside from that that can help you get over whatever your condition is, whether it's depression or something else. Like, obviously it would be received a lot differently. But as you say, the problem is like you made it like a blanket statement. And then also people, it made it sound as though like, because it's not real. Well, then obviously the implication is, well, the medicine isn't real and it's a, it, yeah. it's all just you know it's it's all nonsense so that's what people would worry about because i'd have to say like we're not going to get super into this topic obviously especially not in this particular context but i'll say myself i've been depressed in my life it was about i won't <coughs> say the exact year etc i know people don't need to know that shit but basically when i was depressed i was very depressed uh i i mean the person who was my doctor said i was clinically depressed and so i took antidepressants and i will say for me they worked to some degree. Like I definitely am. Like even though I'm actually someone as, as a person, just generally, I'm somewhat skeptical of some of those things. I will say that the way it helped me is actually like what you said there, but that worked for me. I actually preferred to feel sort of a bit numbed and to not feel anything than to feel really bad. And so what I always tell people is this, I wouldn't recommend it to someone else because I can't, like I can't know what they're like. I can't know what their particular drug they're exactly. on. There's a lot of different ones. But what I'll say is this, like, why, what I got out of it, at least, at least this was my experience. I've obviously never gone back and I've never done it since I don't really know what, what would be like in my life now. But I felt like it just gave me like a little bit of breathing room that I could actually do what you alluded to here, which is fix the rest of my life. And so I had to do things like, I mean, obviously I was just a nerd in doors all day playing games. You know, I wasn't doing anything productive. Like I, at that point in time, esports was tiny. He wasn't making any fucking money off it. Like it gave me a little bit of breathing room where I could sort of, start to socialize with people again because when you're depressed who the fuck wants to be around people who wants to be yeah, around nobody you, wants you know to then, talk to you yeah and then try to find something that gives me some sense of accomplishment or i'm doing something you know like that sort of thing actually that's why i actually think in a mad way i i, I agree you never said any of this in your statement but <coughs> i I, th I think there is something in what you're saying about like sure if you have some literal clinical depression where you have some i don't know again i'm not a scientist so some sort of like imbalance of like serotonin or whatever is what the drugs address 
Like, that might not be possible to entirely overcome without drugs. I don't know personally. I would, again, I would suspect it depends on the person themselves. I would imagine some people it helps, some people it doesn't. That, that's where it was a lot of drugs and therapies. But I will say, if you are someone who's in a bad situation, aside from going to your doctor and telling them you've got a problem and seeing what they can do for you, I mean, maybe you can talk to this. I would definitely recommend people read books about like how to create a, a, a mental frame that puts you in a position where you feel like you're moving towards something and accomplishing something and gets you into a scenario where, like you said, I mean, I think actually what you said is a very famous uh, sentiment that I believe Tony Robbins used to say, which is like the only way you can make like serious change in your life is you have to take drastic action immediately. Like you have to do something like, well, funnily enough, you can, in a way you might have done it by joining the military. You have to do something like get something that disciplines you, something that has like a, a hierarchy and a ranking of what you're going to do. Like I go from step one to step two. I've got something to look to on day three. You know, that's when I have to do another thing. Like, yeah. These things can help when you're in a pit and it seems that you go nowhere and everything's all gray, right? It's, I mean, well, military, you're basically like, you're forced in, it's like you can't be late you're like you're forced in. it's like i have to show up i have to do this it's like this you're, you're basically just forced into these, these situations so i think it definitely helped me out a lot in that regard and just obviously doing the drastic changes but um i mean in this it, it, it it's not the same for everybody so i don't want to like say that like my way works for for, for everybody but like the, it just helped me a lot so and and i i really do like strongly push that like you can take control of your life and it can be something as small as just waking up and like going on. So that's, that's just like my, my main thing I want to push here. Okay. Right. Can you tell me anything then about the circumstances of like uh, the apology that you wrote and the, the comment you made when you, it was said that you were going to re re resign, et cetera, because obviously part of the issue is like on this level, I don't blame people entirely. People who don't know you and only saw the clip, as I said, it looks like you're just being very brash and you just don't care about the topic at all, you know, and maybe you don't even know anything about it. And the problem is when you then a few days later apologize, obviously some people who've been felt hurt by it are going to just say, oh, well, he's just doing that because they made him. Like, you know, or someone wrote it for him and just said sign it at the bottom or something, you know, like it, it's not genuine, it's not legit. But it sounds as though it is something that's affected you in that way. So what would you say to that? Like, did, you, mean, like, did someone tell you you had to write a letter and they told you how to write it and what to write and stuff? Well, I was originally going to do a video kind of like, kind of how I'm doing with you now, but the, everyone told me, to like, dude, you're like going to be way too vulnerable if you do that. And, you know, like, I'm worried about you, you know, because they, they know about my past and like kind of like all this stuff. And um, so they said, they, like, you know, just write down your thoughts and like, we'll help you, uh, you know, like actually make it into like a coherent. Because I'm like, I'm, I'm a gamer, you know, like I'm not, I don't like write perfectly or anything like that. So I just gave them my thoughts and like, you know, kind of drafted it up. And obviously like these pe people that like write every day, so like they help me phrase it better and things like that. Um, but it's def it is my wording and it's like, it is my intention and like my feeling, so. Okay, right. So the obvious question people are gonna wonder about now <laughs> is like, do, do you just disappear for a while now? Do we just not see from you for a few months? Do you just disappear entirely? Will you just stream only? Will you be, will you be involved in league at all or esports for the next few months? Like, what, do you have a basic plan of where you go from here? Um, well, it's, it's like I said, like, I think failure is a great learning experience. And I was actually reading this long article about this guy that uh, he ended up like starting like a very successful, um, like corporate coaching business and things. Uh, and the, one of the things that really got him into it was he basically went to all his like acquaintances, you know, uh, he lived in the US, like, uh, and he visited all of them, all the people like trying to get things off the ground in life, like trying to just like get their life fixed or anything, you know, like whether work on a project or whatever. Um, and he just kind of stayed with like different people like each week or, or something. And he just helped these people and no, like no, you know, no monetary, like they don't care about money or anything like that. Just like trying to help these people and, um, you know, try to like, it's more, more for like spirituality and like to develop yourself and to like help these people. And right. I was thinking about doing this, like I have like plenty of money saved up, you know, like I don't have to worry about that. Um, and I was thinking about maybe like doing something like that for, you know, a few months or just to, just kind of like for to, to to grow myself, I guess, or uh, and just kind of like learn, kind of like more about the world out there. Because being gaming, like you do get stuck into a bubble. Of course, um, yeah. yeah, and it's just kind of like maybe helping gain like more perspective and things. So I'm thinking about doing that, and I'm probably gonna also like do uh, like I am doing like the free coaching thing for everybody for charity. Um, but 
maybe like, uh, I think that there's a lot of people out there that can be like, I don't want to say like I'm a God coach or anything like that, but I think I have like enough experience to where like I can help a lot of people that are like trying to learn and like come up through the scene and I might start like coaching seminars or something uh, to, to like help people that want to learn. Um, and then I'll probably like stream a little bit here and there too. So uh, we'll, we'll see. Like I nothing set into stone yet. Um, like I, it's like I said, I've still been, I'm like in shell shock. Like I'm, uh, it's like this whole situation is just insane to me. So I'm like still well, like figuring it all out. Obviously, a tough thing about the context of it being you in this particular scenario is, I mean, I, I can relate to this myself, is that part of our persona and part of what people like about us is we're very blunt and we just speak our <coughs> minds and, we, and sometimes, obviously, we say spicy things or whatever. And the problem with that is, even when you do that as a joke, people are going to think like, oh, what an asshole. Even if they mean it mildly jokingly themselves, it's like, I even tell people like, I can definitely be an asshole. Like I can guarantee you that I've done it many times. Yeah. But I often joke with people. It's like, I can be an asshole, but a lot of the stuff I say, I'm kind of like, it's like I play an asshole on TV, on the internet, as it were, you know? So the problem is though, when you're in that context, it means if you then fuck up on a non-joke level, it, it feels like people will take it even harsher, you know, like they're already primed to be like, wow, what a piece of shit that guy is, you know, like, is, is that something that's like, can you deal with that? Is that, can, can you still come back and be like a fun loving guy and the guy we like to see on stream who makes jokes that are fine and we, we all enjoy it and it makes it not as bland for the scene? I mean, I'm kind of scared to, to do all that stuff right now because like, I'm sure like if I turn on my stream, people just flame the living shit out of me and tell me to kill myself. So, uh, I don't, I don't know. Like, uh, that's why I wanted to like, kind of, you know, go on that like spiritual, I don't want to call it like a journey, but like, I wanted to like, fi well, maybe like, I don't say, out, fi right? yeah, I want to figure things out and then, you know, we can see where it goes from there. Um, cause that's just like, might be like what I need. Like, right. Cause like, even in like, from my, let's say like from my original position, like being in esports, you know, making like good money as like a coach or like any other like position like even what you're doing you can actually get like trapped in, into this into this bubble where you you aren't growing as a person anymore because you're so set into your respective field and, and you people can just want to see the same shit over and over again right? they want you to be you and just not move on and change or do anything different yeah exactly and then you you stop developing and you know like uh, i'm sure like everybody's heard the quote that progress equates progress equals happiness so um i'm just you know, all about like learning and growing. And like, that's something that I've always like pushed on the people that I've coached and worked with. And um, I think like mentorship is very important. So I just kind of want to like see what I can do in that perspective. And then like, I'll see and go from there. Okay. Right. Here's the thing. Since you've been involved with one particular, <coughs> as you say, for like almost 10 years now, since the very beginning of League of Legends, so we're talking like 2010 or kind of time period, 2009. And now obviously we're in 2018. We're going into season nine of LCS. You know, it's it's been it's going long. for so long. Like I know myself in CSGO that even if CSGO got way smaller as a game, say it became like, you know, just say, say, say it became like StarCraft 2 is now like a smaller eSport and the mm. only people who are involved with it are the hardcore people. You know, it's not like a lot of casual people that still follow it. It's not a big thing. You probably don't make that sick money if you work in the game anymore. Basically, you're only going to do a game like that if it's like for the love of it like I will, I'll just tell people straight up even though yes I love having the money now and all the perks that you get of the lifestyle and it's, it's so amazing if you were somebody who used to just be a gamer I probably would just stick around with CS for a long time like it'd take a lot to move me on because it the part of it is like it's my home, you know, I've always, it's just always been yeah. there in my life. And I hope that I can make some progress and also take that back into the game. Like I can come back in as a slightly improved person or level up my skills or something. Obviously yeah, right now, community. right now you can't know where you'll be in six months or whatever. But would you like one day to be a coach again or to be an on-camera personality? Would you like League of Legends to be a big part of your life going forwards? Well, that's the thing is like, I mean, this, I mean, obviously like I, I still do enjoy League of Legends and stuff like that, but that's not the reason like why I'm in the scene or like why I'm coaching. Like basically when I became a coach, you know, a couple of years ago when I, when I ended up joining Coast, like I, I, you know, retired from Gravity, retired from Pro Play and uh, David Slan, like he was the owner of Coast at the time. He like owns like Steinway Pianos. He, he called me up and he's like, I think you could be, you know, you could do really good at this. And he kind of like mentored me in that regard. And um like I've, I've always had people in the scene that have always like been strong mentors to me and like helped me like grow and progress as a person. Like I had like Steven Aron said, like, uh, you know, I had like Davis land. Um, and even like here, like, uh, like Dick fan, like other people, uh, just 
pe- people around you that are like helping you grow and like develop as a person. And that's something I really enjoyed, you know, being a part of, like having that come to me. And then I, I enjoy like passing that on to other people and like growing other people. So like, I think that a big thing that a lot of people uh, miss out on coaching and where a lot of people fail is like anybody can do X's and O's and yeah, like, and everybody sure. always wants to like flex their like game knowledge, or, like, blah, 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 like this, all this macro, that, all that shit. Like league, league in its current state is like the most dumbed down it's ever been in like since for like three years. Like if you don't have like the basics of game knowledge and macro, then like you don't even belong in the conversation, let alone to like be in your job, you know? And I think a lot of people miss out on the actual, like what the true goal should be. Like granted winning and all that is like super important to me, but I mean, the game is League of Legends is an it's an entertainment industry, like all sports are, cool. and it's like you can you can get multiple things out of it. Like you can get like we got to win at all costs kind of mentality, or you can get the mentality where it's like, I I I think the culture is super important, and the culture that I like to push is like growing people into adults and like passing on that same mentorship that like other people before me in the in the scene has like passed on to me, and like that like felt really good that when they gave it to me, so it's like I want to give that to other people. Okay. Uh, that reminds me, actually, one thing I meant to address, because I know this is another thing that like was a public criticism, is obviously the fact that you were a coach and you said those things made people worried. Like, people thought, like, oh, does he not care about, you know, the people who play the game? Is it just, like, are they just players to him? Does he just coach the game? And, he, you know, if a player comes to him, would he say the same thing to him? Presumably not, right, based on this conversation. Oh, of course not. And, I mean, I don't want to, like, put any of my players on the spot, but, like, I guarantee you talk to any of them, like, it's it's like a mutual level of respect and like like I care about them and then like I had, I actually got one of the things that like really helped me through all this is like I had all the people that I've ever worked with ever coached with like they sent me like messages and stuff like that and like kind of like talked about like what I helped them and all that and and like just you know kind of hoping that I get through this and stuff because I mean they know who I am like as a real as a person and like what my actual intentions are and things like that so like, I appreciate like everybody like sent messages and things and that were they were like rational and you know. And I just appreciate all that. Okay. What would you What would you say to people who like only know a bit about you? So maybe they know a bit about like League of Legends. They know a bit, maybe a little bit about your past. I mean, people have probably heard some of the stories or whatever of like the crazy days of CLG and stuff. And now, basically, they've never seen this side to you though. Like, like actually, it's funny. It's funny because you've done interviews in the past. Well, obviously. And AMAs where you mentioned I was in the military or I did this thing or I did this job. And so it's like I felt like I knew your past, but I obviously didn't know any of the context. I didn't know what caused this or what put you in a situation like or how did you feel about that? Like I, I have to say up straight up, I assumed you joined the military for something like, you know, you were like a wayward teen and you were like, oh, this will give me discipline or something like that. Sounds like it was maybe a bit of a different scenario. So who 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 is Saint Vicious? Like who you who are you at the moment? Who are you trying to be? I mean I'm just trying to be me, man, but I don't know, like it, it's just, I always had the persona. Yeah, I always had the persona where it's like I'm just this like aggressive, like crazy. Like when I was at my most famous or popular, or whatever. It's when I was just like drunk all the fucking time and like saying obnoxious stuff and like just being a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? Like uh, I think, yeah. Like people, we're in a world now where people would actually like they really want to see is like they they either want to see like people be brought down or they want to see like the next like crazy shit that somebody says. You know, like that's. That's what people love to see. That's what they get entertained by. And I guess I kind of got caught up in that persona for like the longest time. And I don't want to say like I'm living a, a lie or anything. Um, but like that's just the image that I always like put forward to just kind of entertain people. And sure. Yeah. Like I don't, and I don't want to like people tune into like a stream or like an interview or something like that. Like they, they're doing it. Like maybe they have their own problems going on or something. Nobody wants to like tune into a stream and, you know, like have to like be hit with the exact same things that they're doing. Granted, like, you know, there can be a mutuality of like, you can help each other, but it's like, like gaming and and streaming and all that type of stuff. That's, uh, it's like an escape for a lot of people. So like, I didn't want to like bring that on to other people, if that makes sense. No, that makes absolute sense to me, man. It's actually one thing. I I mean, I'll I'll plug my own video. I once did a, 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 
a video about this topic where I said like that gaming's a waste of time basically. And I said that initially to be like clever, to draw people in and think like, wow, he's going to say gaming's a waste of time. Because obviously objectively just playing video games or being like a fucking guy who makes videos, it's not important shit like on the grand scale. But in a way it is because for example, it the is. dude who does have a tough life or you know what, even the guy who's doing something amazing, like he is a charity worker or fucking brain surgeon, he has to go home and relax as well. And if he's mm. in the fucking video games and he's a TSM fan, he wants to hear some stupid shit I'm going to say about why they're going to lose this matter. Of course, <laughs> you know, I, in, in a mad way, I can actually help that guy in some very minor way. Yeah, but you still play a role. Yeah, everybody has something they're good at in life. And, you know, I think we just get brought up in this world where, like, you think if you're just doing, like, what's important is if you go to college and you do, like, your nine to five job and you just get locked into the system and, like, you're part of society in that way. But, like, I think that a lot of people out there should be, shouldn't be afraid to take risk and, like, do what they love and, like, play to their strengths and, you know, you can, you generally live like a more fulfilled life. And like, everybody has like something they're great at, like that they can bring back to people. And like yours is like, you know, you do videos, like you, you incite, I don't want to say drama, but you incite like definitely some crazy thoughts. So, and, uh, you know, obviously like you're a great commentator and, uh, it's an entertainment factor, you know, um, sure. like every, everybody has like something they're good at. So I just, yeah, just run with it. Well, I would also say as we as we start to like wrap the interview up, like as someone who's been in a, a similar position to you, I mean, you could even argue on some of the things I've fucked up on, probably worse in some ways. It depends on, it depends on what, I don't know how you'd grade these things. There's not really a competition in that sense. But what I would say is this, like luckily, since you are someone who has been a bit spicy in the past and you've had your battles and your dramas in public, it's like, I, I think you've got the right mentality when you say that like, by accepting, it's like, basically, I'll, I'll, I'll make an analogy to being a player. If you're a player who's a good player, but when you have a loss, you just go, nah, I didn't really lose that. It was everyone else who lost that. It wasn't my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. Like, I still played pretty well, you know? Like, sure, maybe I could have done one thing better, but whatever, you know, I, I should have won. Like, I'll, I'll win the next one. If you have that mentality, you're not going to make much progress as a player, you know? You'll always be stuck in, like, a similar sort of bandwidth, you know? Whereas you see that the players who make the most progress, sometimes startling progress from being, like, bad pros to fucking really good they're the people who can take all the losses and it doesn't matter even if it wasn't all their fault or if, if in this scenario something fucked up happened that they couldn't expect you have to be able to sort of take responsibility for all of it and then hopefully that'll teach you what you can do next time to be better right so I'd, I'd apply that in the same sense like listen it's never going to be nice that this happened and it doesn't matter even if years from now people don't comment on it there'll still be some arsehole who'll bring it up and be like, oh, didn't you say this years ago? But if you actually do use it and somehow grow as a person, and especially, as you're saying, doing the charity stream and trying to help people out, if you can do this aspect, then as fucked up as it might have been in for the moment, something good comes out of it. And actually it can be something where, I'm not saying it's like a positive thing, but something positive <laughs> can happen as a result of it. And I know in my own instance, I'll give you, again, I'll relate to it. When I've said stupid, edgy jokes, which people then took as like, very extreme statements even though in some some of those circumstances i definitely didn't mean the joke in the way that they've interpreted it it made me have to think about well, what does it mean when you say these statements or what or how do these things affect people that i don't know about personally you know like in my life maybe that thing is a joke but some other guy it's some super serious shit so i have to say as, as bizarre as it sounds i'm actually sort of a bit thankful for some of the fucked up things that happened because otherwise i'd still be the same ignorant idiot i was five years ago or whatever you know definitely and i mean that's yeah, failure is like the greatest teacher in life. And yeah, I, I read like a lot of biographies, you know, about like really successful people in the world. And and literally all the biographies are always just riddled with like the biggest failure you could possibly imagine. And like, that's like what kind of led them up to being like the great people that they are. And I like hope, and I hope like people, you know, make, get that takeaway from this and don't be afraid of failure and just use it to like the best way that you possibly can. And like, that's just, this is part of being an adult and part of being a human being. And that's how you, that's how you progress in life. Okay. Right. At the end of the interview, then, do you have like any final message? I mean, we've addressed a lot of stuff. Do you have any final message or do you have somebody maybe you want to thank or any any final statement to leave people with? Uh, I mean, you know, just kind of thank for all, for all the people of FlyQuest. Like, there really is no hard feelings there. Like, um, like I, I respect all the people there, like Riot Edens, like Trisha Sagita, uh, Nick Fan. Like, they're all like really stand up like great people and like all the people I worked with. You know, I hope that they really do next well. Do they do well next split? And um, you know, and I'm sorry, like to everybody that I did end up like saying what I did, and it was like fucked up. And you know, hopefully, like some good can come out of this. Like, I mean, if I can help, like if I can help somebody out of this, then even though like I took a pretty big hit, like then I'm, I'm fine with it. You know, so I mean, we'll just see how it goes, and um, I'm just gonna like keep pushing on as a person. 
This video was kindly supported by Dean Tanglis, Andreas Snazor Westerland, Gardner Wilson, Ollie J, Tobias Bernasconi, Nate DOGG, James Harding, Kyla Harris, Travis Greb, Daniel Yordanov, and as always, a special thanks goes out to Jerky's Minion. Would you like to suggest a topic or a guest for some of my upcoming content? Perhaps you want to ask me a question in my monthly AMA. Do you want to see some teasers? See who's going to be the next guest on one of my shows? Maybe you want to take part in an esports discussion with me. Well, put your money where your mouth is and join the Skrilluminati today at the Patreon link in the description box below.